Next is, uh, next is a professor of law at the University of Mississippi. And uh, we're pleased to have him here. His name is Ronald Horaciak. And um, he'll, he'll talk to you about what he's going to talk to you about. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Um, I, uh, yesterday at breakfast, I was talking to somebody, and I said, I'm, I'm Ron Richlock. I teach law at the University of Mississippi. Guy said, a law professor from Ole Miss, why do you think you need to be here? And uh, I'm, so I'm kind of glad I devoted the first couple slides of my presentation today to explain to you uh, why I'm here and what my interest uh, in this is. Uh, I began teaching law school uh, 21 years ago back, and they needed someone to teach environmental law. It's a relatively new field as law goes. And um, back in 1990, I published a couple fairly conventional law review articles that talked about the implications from the increase in the tides that would move property boundaries and what that would mean for some particularly quirky little law they had in Mississippi. But I began studying uh, the uh, 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 global warming issue that, that long ago. Just last year, I had a student who uh, read one of these articles because he's doing some work. We, you might have heard of Katrina. We've got some coastal issues going on again. And he looked at it, and he said, you know, instead of being, having been written 17 years ago, this looked like this was written last month. And I, uh, I pulled it out, and I was asked then to, uh, to uh, talk. Al Gore's movie was being distributed to uh, all the high schools and junior highs, and it's in the colleges now. And some classes, that's, you know, they'll, they'll spend uh, a couple hours, a couple days in a row watching his movie. And some parents wanted me to, uh, to address that. They knew that I was familiar with environmentalism. And, and uh, that, that, that I, I did this. So, so I started pulling together a, a PowerPoint show to uh, talk to kids and to understand the concept of global warming. I drew on, uh, this is a, a book I'd written in 1995 and in uh, 2003 about using exhibits in courts, about how to make exhibits persuasive and how to recognize when there was some sort of fraud or some kind of problem with your opponent's exhibit. And as I did my searches, and as I tried to pull up exhibits over and over again, I began to see problems in the exhibits that are all over the internet and are widely used in our, in our uh, uh, kids' literature. Let me give you a little background example just on how exhibits can be. Um, people look at a graph or a chart or a diagram, and they think they're looking at the evidence, but they're not. There's someone who created this and created it with an idea of persuading someone. Take a bell curve. We can present it like this. We can flatten it. We can crunch it in. It's the same exact data. You can capture an image, put it in a PowerPoint show, and, and manipulate it all you want and convey very different. The bell curve doesn't even look as different as some other kinds can. Let's take a bar chart. Uh, members of uh, uh, pe people from the different counties, different cities, actually, my uh, where my kids live and where my nephews live, uh, who attended a, uh, a county fair. And you see that more from Memphis than from o Oxford or Carmel, but pretty close to the same. This is a, what, what I would call an accurate representation. If we collapse the bottom line so that the 0 to 50 now is represented by a segment the same size as the, the 50 to 52 or 52 to 54 is, we suddenly magnify the difference between the, the different county attendances. We could accomplish the same thing by setting the baseline at a different point. I arbitrarily uh, picked 48 here because it was easy to do. But again, setting the baseline somewhere other than at zero, we can create very different visual perceptions. And this is what we're seeing in the global warming debates over and over again. This is probably the most popular debate, uh, 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 most popular image you find on the internet uh, talking about global warming, the warming trend. It's uh, really very creative. Uh, when you look at it, it does some interesting things. It shows an increase in temperature from about negative 0.2 in 1880 to about 0.6, so eight-tenths of a degree over the course of 130 years. Um, they should have three lines. The three lines, and, and for scientists, I'm, it's all helpful. For a normal person, it looks like, ooh, every indicator is going this way. Everything's going up. It's going up very sharply. 
to even take the uh, uh, title and you, you, the, 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 the graph and you put it inside there, the, the mean and the five-year mean, put it inside so it looks cluttered, it looks very scary. If you took the same exact uh, line, you crunched it down, put it flat, put it on a graph that went from zero to 22, for Americans that's about 32 to about 70, uh, you'd see something closer to this. This in fact is a little generous, overly generous. I didn't quite crunch the line down as far as it might be. Now if people saw this as the warming trend, it would not be nearly as scary. And that's why you never see this. That's why people want to show the other ones. Uh, oh, one other thing about that, these all start at 1880 or 1860. I was very happy to see throughout this conference, scientists are using ones that start at 1900. It seems much more logical. They start at 1880 or 1860 because that way they pick up the increase at the end of the Little Ice Age. And you guys probably know about, more about the Little Ice Age and, and that than I do. But by starting it instead of at 1990, at, 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 at 1880 or at 1860, you get a little extra boost in the graph and it makes it look more persuasive. We have similar things when we look at uh, carbon dioxide concentrations. Carbon dioxide concentration is up, uh, and, as we know, since the industrial age. Uh, and yet when we look at this graph, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it says it's over the last thousand years. In fact, it's over the last 1,100 years. Uh, rather than showing the number, uh, the, the percentage increase, which is 0.03% of the atmosphere to 0.04% of the atmosphere. We take the parts per million at 260 and we show it up to about 360. But we don't start at zero. We set the bottom line at 260 and the top line at 380. So again, the line fills the entire area. The very end there is colored red, the part that's directly measured. There, as, as you all know, there are issues about uh, before what's directly measured, but that's that's put in red, so that's the really frightening part. Al Gore, when his movie, you know, he gets on a lift and goes up along with this thing. That, that, that one part of his movie, uh, uh, all kinds of, of imagery issues in that movie. If this is the red part of the last graph, by the way, from JunkScience.com, just the last 50 years, put on a graph that goes from zero to 600. Uh, this is the part that's dramatically turned up in this graph, the red part right at the end but you put it on a more reasonable graph, it looks like this. Again, still going up, but it's not the frightening scenario you get from the other one. Well, we all know it's about not just correlation. This is a graph, I, uh, a guy named Robert Horner, I think yesterday had a great visual of this. We can track temperature, we can, can track CO2, and we can see that they move together. Al Gore did this, a government uh, 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 often shows it like this. They're one above the other. If, in fact, you, you put one on top of the other, superimposed one, you see that often it's the CO2 that trails the temperature, suggesting cause and effect is not there. Suggesting and there are theories, as, as again, you all know, that the CO2 model may not work, that, in fact, that the rising temperatures may lead to increased CO2. Uh, when you put uh, the, the temperature across solar activity, we see maybe even a, a better uh, correlation, but few people want to talk about this. It's not about whether CO2 levels went up or whether temperature went up. It's about the causation. We know the temperatures went up. This is the conclusive evidence of that. <laughs> we know there are other factors in play, too. Uh, we know that as the number of pirates have reduced across the world, the temperatures have gone up. So if we had more pirates, perhaps we could bring temperatures back down. Y you can find correlations on all kinds of stuff. Um, of course, the big issue is carbon emissions. And again, carbon emissions can be presented a lot of different ways. This is a little bit older. Uh, China now uh, emits more than the US, as I understand. But, but uh, at the time I made this, this is accurate. Once again, whether it's stretched out or whether it's compressed, we get different visual images. So we see different between this and that. Depends how it's, it's presented. We also might present, uh, if we present comparatively, we have to decide do we want to present uh, pure emissions? Do we want to do it based upon per capita, uh, wh which might make sense? On geographic size, which uh, because of dispersion might make sense. Based upon the, the gross domestic product, that might make sense. And any of those things, America would look much better than it does just with the raw uh, emissions. But virtually everybody picks the raw emissions one. But more than that, we usually get something like this, where it's tilted to the side. 
Anytime you see a 3D visual in a graph, be suspicious of it. Be very suspicious. They are more visually appealing, so there's a reason to do that. But the, the, the groups up front, the United States here in particular, the red segment, you see more red than is justified by 25%. Uh, because of the side angle that you pick up, you see more uh, of the red. And it's interesting here, so I started looking, well, gross dom domestic product, if I were trying to compare it, what would I find if I tried to find a pie chart showing that? Here I get the United States in the back. So we actually, uh, you get uh, France at 4%, United Kingdom at 4% um, up front. They're overemphasized. Uh, uh, the United States is de-emphasized. You know about, so far everything I've talked about is based on the assumption that we in fact have good data. We all know about the hockey stick, which is based actually on bad, or maybe on bad data. When we see photographs, compared to photographs like this where we've seen uh, glaciers retreat or other issues uh, uh, come along like that, different issues come up. Um, we often are not told what time of year, whether it was in, uh, you know, one year or another, what was uh, um, you know, one time of the month or, or, or one particularly warm year. But if even forgetting about that, we're not debating the temperature. We're trying to debate causation. So photographs like this really don't show us anything. Uh, in fact, in Al Gore's movie, he picks one of the very few glaciers that is still growing in South America and uses it to illustrate, because it's very dramatic. It's growing out in the ocean, so the end of it is breaking off. The reason it's breaking off is because it's still growing. Great dramatic, dramatic photograph. Uh, but absolutely incorrect in trying to, to prove his point. He's, he's got one of the, one of the growing uh, glaciers doing that. We get the same point with polar bears. We see the photographs of the poor polar bears stranded on, on icebergs. Um, and, we've, and, and there were sessions yesterday where we talked a lot about polar bears and populations really not decreasing. Um, more important, what the, the, you know, the fundamental issue here is not that there, we may have increases in temperature. The issue is the causation between carbon dioxide and those increases in temperature. And these photographs show us nothing related to that. Finally, Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. Um, this, is, this is the image for it. Um, and we see the smoke swirling out of the smokestack. CO2, most of you, what does CO2 look like? It's clear. It's transparent. So, I mean, you don't even see CO2 in, in, in the first case. So this is, again, trying to get the shock value from the imagery. Uh, and, of course, it's swirling into a hurricane. And, again, we heard this morning that the linkage between any kind of global warming and, and hurricane uh, activity, that was a convenient um, issue for him. I live in Mississippi. It was convenient for him that the hurricanes were big that one year. Uh, right when his movie came out, and they, they could try to uh, draw that linkage. It hasn't continued since, so you don't see the, the argument for it uh, uh, since that point. Uh, I guess the main thing that, that um, you know, you know, I, I want to close with is that if we acknowledge that we have issues uh, with, where the temperature may be fluctuating, perhaps naturally, and we even acknowledge that there, there has been an increase in carbon dioxide, that doesn't make the case for global warming and all of the drastic prescriptions that uh, people are putting for forth uh, for it. Thank you very much.